Hello and welcome to video 2 of this series. If you haven't seen the previous video, make sure you go do that because it does contain some important information about how to set up this Unity project. Right now we're going to be talking about the sound effects in this level, what goes into making them, and how they're hooked up. So this is the completed fmod session, and I've also divided everything into more folders just to keep the events organized. As you can see, there's only really two categories of sounds. There's enemy sounds and there's player sounds. I'm going to be covering those in detail later on in this video. One thing that I want to point out is that all of these sounds in these events for this video series were made from fmod IO. So no external audio editing or processing was done inside of something like a dot to these events or the audio. It was all taken from fmod IO, dragged into the fmod events, and then processed and edited from there. Now I'll show you how to do all of that. So to open fmod IO, just go over here where it says fmod IO, jump to, and then this opens up. So in this screen, you can do one of two things. You can either type in a keyword for the sound that you're looking for, or you can go over here to your account, and this is your library. So over here, all the sounds that you have previously purchased will show up in categories so you can easily find them. So if I'm working on the elephant, let's say I'm working on the footsteps, I want something that's gonna be suitable for the footstep layer. So something like this, a heavy stomp. And let's say I wanna use that. I could do one of two things. I can either select the name of this audio file, click, hold, drag over to the assets and just place it anywhere. And as you can see, it gets placed in the assets folder and you can see the unused sign, which indicates that it is not currently being used by an event. The other thing that you can do is to select the event. And once you have that open and you have an empty audio track, you can click, drag, and drag it into your event. And that will start to download and maybe take a while depending on your connection. But once you have it downloaded, it'll show up in your event and you can do what you want with it. But now going back to the audio bin, as you can see, there are a lot of audio files over here but I have created some folders. It can be good practice to organize some of these audio assets, just so you know what they're for. Alternatively, you can always just type in what you're looking for into the search, and that'll give you results based on the title. If you don't have any sounds in your FMOD IO library, you can search for them in the store. So for example, let's say I'm working on the Elephant Hurt event right now, and I'm looking for some kind of squealing layer for the elephant whenever it gets hit by a bullet. So let's type in squeal. And now we have a bunch of options. So any of these options that have kind of like a fraction, that just means that there's this many results, in this case six, for this particular sound. And now you can just click on any one of the results to hear what they sound like. And now let's just imagine that those are the sounds that I wanted. So then you just add them to your cart. And then when it comes time to check out, I'm just gonna add a few more. You can actually open them up once again. What's useful about being able to do this is that you can once again audition your sounds. If you've gone through 50 sound effects while you were browsing and you've only added, let's say five in this case, you can compare them once again to see how well they're actually gonna fit your event. Let's start off with the elephant death sound. As you can see, there are a number of layers to this sound. So let's play the whole thing. And now each individual element on its own. So by listening to all the layers, you can see that each layer brings something else to the sound. The balloon squeak, for example, emphasizes the higher end. While something like the burp emphasizes the lower end. And then this stop track is actually there for two reasons. One, to provide some low end impact. And the second reason is actually to tidy up the whole sound effect. So if I mute the stomp layer and the trumpet layer, since the trumpet is also helping at the end over here, and I play the sound now, you can hear that towards the end of the audio files, about over here, the sound gets cut off. But listen again, this time I'll add in the trumpet and the stomp layers. So as you can hear, the cutoff that we were originally hearing with these three files is reduced to the point where it's not even an issue anymore. And that's because of these two layers, the trumpet and the stomp. So because of its design, this is one of the benefits that FMOD provides. Because of these tracks and their layout effectively functions like a digital audio workstation, 
there's almost no need to go back into your digital audio workstation because you can make all the adjustments over here and you don't have to re-export files and then worry about naming conventions and then import them into FMOD again. So an example of where this might happen would be if the animation for this accompanying event got changed to be shorter or longer, you could do all the necessary adjustments in here, just drag the clips to make it longer or shorter until it fits. Now let's go over to Unity to see how to attach this elephant death event sound to the relevant animation. Once you're in Unity, make sure you're on the Assets folder and not the completed assets, and just scroll down, go to Models, Characters, and Elephant. And now you can click on this Disclosure Triangle and go to the Death Animation, go to Edit. As you can see, there's a lot of information on this panel. The only thing you have to worry about is the events over here and this animation preview over here. If you press play over here, you can actually test out how the animation is going to look when it's played in game. So the elephant just jumps up and then it just turns over and it's dead. And over here you have the events. Now usually when you open the animation, the events might be hidden. If it is, just click on the triangle to open this up. And as you can see, you have this timeline that follows this red cursor, which is also this red cursor over here in the play preview. So as you're previewing the animation, the cursor follows on the events and you're free to add events where you want. You can see over here we have two markers. Those are events. To create an event, just make sure the cursor is on the timeline somewhere and then just click over here to add event. And then that opens this edit animation event window. So all of this might look familiar to you and might look unfamiliar. Right now, just know that we're gonna use these events to send messages to our script to play the relevant sound, in this case, the death sound. Now over to the relevant script, go to completed assets, scripts, enemies. And in this case, I've added the related function in the enemy movement script. So inside this enemy movement script, after I've taken out the original Unity audio source references, all I've done is created a simple function over here, play sound, that will play the necessary fmod event when this gets called. So when play sound gets called, first of all, it needs a string, which gets stored into path as an argument. And then all that happens is we have the call over here, fmodunity.runtimemanager.playoneshot. Essentially, what this highlighted text communicates to fmod is it says, okay, fmod, play one instance of this event. And then these two parameters are also needed. So this path defines the location and the name of the fmod event. This location and name is going to be defined by us as a string in the event animation we just created. So over here in the animation event, we have to add two things. One, the function, which is the name of that function we just made, so play sound. Okay, and now the string, which is going to be called path, is the reference to the fmod event. If we look in fmod, our event is all the way over here, it's called elephant death, but if we just put elephant death in here, it wouldn't work. The full path for the event is actually going to be sound effects, enemies, elephant, elephant death. But instead of writing all that out, let's do it the simple way. Go to Unity, go to fmod, event browser. Now look for that event. Over here in the event details, we have conveniently the full path name. So if you just click on this copy icon, you've just copied the event path and go back to the event and just paste, control V, command V, and there you go. So let's sum up where we are right now. We've opened the animation for death for the elephant. We've dragged through the timeline. We've selected a spot to play the event from. We created the event. And in this event, we've told it to output the function play sound and the string that is the relevant path name for the fmod event we wanna call. So what that means for the script is the animation event is saying, okay, play sound method, I want you to play. And the string that I'm gonna to output to you to store into this path variable to play is gonna be the relevant fmod event path name. So once again, here's the path name. So you can just imagine this is being stored into this path and then this path is the same thing. So essentially it's just a short form of this. And finally, one last thing that play one shot needs in order to work, is this the location of the sound to be played? So very simply, all we have is get component transform dot position. What this is gonna do is when this function gets called is it's gonna get the transform components of whatever this script is attached to. So that's gonna be the elephant. It's gonna get the transform component of the elephant, and then it's gonna look at the position, the vector three. So that means that every time this play sound method gets called, we have an event that goes in here. So the name of the relevant event, the elephant death sound, and the position, where the elephant is in 3D space, when we play the sound and where we play the sound. Now that you understand how that works, give it a shot. I'm just gonna delete this. One very important point to be aware of is the position of your event on the animation timeline. If you notice over here, I don't have my play sound event calling until all the way 
over here on the event. So the elephant is already off the ground. Now the reason the event is all the way over here is just because I've gone through the level, I've tested the event in various spots, and I've determined that the fmod sound that I made works best when started over here on the animation. So the lesson to be learned from this is just because you start the event sound when the animation starts doesn't mean it's going to match up and sound and look awesome in game. You're going to have to do some tweaking, but the result of that tweaking is going to be a great experience. But what about some of the other sounds that don't have animations to accompany them, like the hurt sound? Well, then the solution in this case is to call the sound event directly from the script. So for the elephant hurt sound, let's once again go into our completed assets, scripts, enemy, and enemy health. And once you've gone through and removed all the original Unity audio references, scroll down, and over here in the take damage script, there is a comment in the original script that says, play the hertz sound effect. We're gonna start over here. So this is the result, event emitter ref play, and that's gonna play the sound effect. Now let's talk about how we got there. At the top of the script, we declared an fmod unity studio event emitter, and we named it event emitter ref. Now in the awake function, we set the event emitter ref to be equal to get component, fmod unity .studio event emitter. This means that whatever script this object is attached to, it's going to look for and get the fmod studio event emitter component. So since this script is going to be attached to the elephant prefab, we want to make sure we add an fmod studio event emitter to the elephant, or else this isn't going to work. So over to the elephant prefab, so this is what it would look like. You would just make sure that you add the studio event emitter, which could be added by going to add component and then just searching for fmod and then studio event emitter. And also here you would hook up the correct events. You would go search and make sure you have the hurt event selected. And that's the only thing you need to change. You don't have to change play over here. Just make sure in your script you have event emitter ref play and at the appropriate time when the enemy takes damage, this event will play. You might be thinking to yourself, hey, what if I have multiple events I wanna call for the elephant? Is this gonna be the right way to do it? The answer is no. This is only useful if you have one event emitter on your game object. If you have multiple events, like on the player over here, we have the player hurt sound, player death, and the music system, those events are all going to have to get called individually through script. I'll show you how to call events individually through a script later in this series when I talk about the music system. Now let's go back to fmod and talk about some of the more advanced topics. The elephant hurt sound gets called every time the elephant gets hit by a bullet from the player's gun. In this level that we're using, the fire rate on the player's gun isn't that extreme, but it's still enough that we don't want the sound from this event to play every time the player has hit the elephant. In order to prevent this event from playing after every time the elephant gets hit by a bullet, we use the cooldown. The cooldown is located over here in the dock, and you can set it to a value in milliseconds or even seconds. Right now it's set to 240 milliseconds. That means that the first bullet from the player's gun is going to call this elephant hurt sound, it's going to play, but then this event will wait 240 milliseconds until another bullet can trigger this sound. Here's what this elephant hurt event sounds like without the cooldown. And now here's what the same event sounds like with the cooldown on. So as you can hear, this event is just getting called less frequently and that's going to help with the overall mix of the game. And additionally, you can use event sounds to add further cooldown to different layers of your event. In this case, I have an event sound for the grunts. So if I open this up, I've got a multi sound with all the possible elephant grunts. And within this referenced event sound, I have a cooldown of 300 milliseconds. This can be a great way to add not only variety to your sound, but to also improve the overall mix of the event. You can have the essential layers, such as the squeak and the punch, to play more frequently when the elephant has been hit. And then you could have the grunts to be less frequent. Right now, let's talk about multi sounds. So you're probably used to opening up a multi sound and seeing all the available audio clips that are going to play. Now, if you assume that all of these audio files have an equal chance to play, then you're correct. But you can also define the play percentage of each file by right clicking and setting play percentage. In this baby laugh example, I'm using the play percentage. This allows me to set different percentages for each file and allow me to play each file either more frequently or less frequently than the others. So over here, I've set baby laugh two to play 50% of the time, baby laugh one, 30% and laugh three, 19%. That means most of the time I'll hear this sound. <laughs> and some of the time I'll hear this, and then I'll hear this even less frequently. So let's try that. And 
And there you go. So this is how you can use multi-sound play percentages to influence what sound gets called more frequently or less frequently in a multi-sound container. And as you notice, I'm also using a multi-sound for the gunfire, the gunshots. But I'm also using referenced event sounds that fit into this multi-sound container. This is another great use for event sounds. So I'm using this firecrackers audio sound for the gunshot. This works well, but it originally came from this audio file. Out of all of these firecracker shots, really only the last one has enough decay that would sound good for this gunshot sound. So I just split this audio file over here at the end, so I can have this good firecracker shot because it has a nice attack and the full decay. And then I went through the rest of this audio, and then I selected two more firecracker shots that I thought had nice attacks or starts of the sounds. And then I did two things. I copied the additional two sounds and I placed them into the relevant event. And then I also copied this original firecracker sound that I really liked. From each of these files, I could use their components to make new sounds completely. And as you can see here, I've taken both components and I've used the new firecracker sound from the beginning while taking that good decay of the original firecracker sound and blending it to make sure this sounds like an original audio file. This crossfade over here is created automatically whenever you drag an audio file onto another audio file. And the last point over here, I've added an EQ on each of these gunfire shots. This was done so I could make individual EQ adjustments on each of the gunshots, and I could also add some randomization to the EQ, which would add more variation in between all the gunshots. Here's what it sounds like. Here's the same effect, but a little more exaggerated. So after all of that, and some mixing, and some additional probability conditions on some of the sounds, this is what the finished player gunshot sounds like. <laughs> that takes care of this video, and now for the summary. In addition to showing you the overall layout of the FMOD session, and how to use FMOD IO, I've talked about things that you can do to your events in FMOD, such as cooldown, play percentage on multi-sounds, using layers on your events, and using reference event sounds on events such as the gunshot to make new gunshot sounds out of the existing audio files. And finally, I've shown you a couple of ways to call your FMOD events from scripts and emitters within your game object. Join me in the next video where I'll be talking about the music system, transition timelines, and more. Thanks for watching.